This is George Tucker. Um, so he and a team of authors from Google Brain and Google DeepMind are going to be talking about doubly reparameterized gradient estimators. So yeah, I'll be uh, talking about doubly uh, reparameterized gradient estimators for latent variable models. Um, this is joint work with uh, Dietrich, Shane, and Chris. So generative latent variable models are uh, an expressive class of models that can represent complex distributions, um, for example, uh, natural images. So in this example, I'm showing images from generated by a pixel VAE model. And it's trained on images of bedrooms. And you can see that it's able to generate um, very realistic looking images. Uh, one of our, the really interesting applications of these kinds of models, I think, is to uh, model-based reinforcement learning. And the idea here is that if we uh, learn an accurate simulator of the uh, environment, then we can uh, train our agent in this simulator without having to uh, get expensive real-world data. And in this example that I'm showing, uh, David Ha trained a generative model on a car racing simulator. And then he trained his agent on the latent space of that model, and then was able to transfer the learned agent to the real car racing simulator and get um, strong results. Um, these mo models can also be used to model sequences of images or videos. Um, so this is a model trained on videos of a gripper arm moving around. And on the left, you can see the ground truth um, video. And then on the right, there are uh, samples from the model. And you can see that they look realistic and they show a diverse range of uh, behavior. So at the core of these models is a latent variable z. Um, and you can think of these as representing some kind of idea of latent factors, such as in this example, if we were modeling handwritten uh, digits, it could be like the number or the stroke width. And the model samples these latent factors, then passes it through a decoder to generate a high dimensional image, like this image of a two. And our goal is to model this data. In this case, it would be the handwritten digits with this generative model. And we can compute the likelihood of the data by integrating out the latent factors from the joint distribution. And we'd like to maximize the log likelihood of this kind of model with stochastic gradient um, ascent. And the idea, unfortunately, is that computing this integral is intractable. So we'll have to resort to approximate methods. So in this work, we introduce an unbiased low variance gradient estimator for training latent variable models. And we show its applicability to three recent training techniques for latent variable models, Iway, which I'll talk about at length in a little bit, and then reweighted wake sleep and jackknife variational inference. So I'll start by just giving some background on auto, um, variational autoencoders and Iway, and then I'll tell you how the uh, doubly reparameterized gradient estimators work, and then show some experiments on a simple Gaussian system, and then some more complex experiments on OmniGlot and MNIST data sets. So formally, we want to optimize uh, variational lower bound, uh, this evidence lower bound on the log likelihood. So as before, we have this model where we sample z, pass it through a decoder to get our high dimensional image. And we would like to maximize the log likelihood, which requires us to compute this integral. Unfortunately, computing the uh, integral is intractable. So we have to resort to some kind of approximation. And we introduce uh, an encoder network, which takes our in, um, image and recovers the latent factors. And we can use this to construct a lower bound on the log likelihood, which we can actually um, estimate tractably. And the idea is that if we push up this lower bound, then we'll end up pushing up the log likelihood and doing what we originally had wanted to do. And the other thing to note is that we can estimate this expectation with a single sample by drawing a sample from Q and then evaluating the uh, thing inside the expectation. What we note, though, is that the tightness of the bound is controlled by how accurately this Q distribution can match the posterior distribution of the model. And t 
typically we use a very simple family of Q distributions for tractability, which can then adversely affect the learned models that we get. So in 2015, Yuri Berta introduced this idea of, well, instead of just drawing one sample, why not draw multiple samples, and we can combine them to construct a tighter lower bound. And the great thing about this is that by drawing more and more samples, we can construct a sequence of tighter lower bounds, which in the limit um, converge to the marginal log likelihood that we were trying to estimate originally. And this is great because as our, the number of samples goes to infinity, the effect of an overly simplistic Q diminishes. Unfortunately, in recent work by uh, Tom Rainforth, he found that actually the gradient estimator becomes worse as k increases. So let me try to explain this graph. So what I was saying is that we can take k samples, and so we have a choice. We could use those k samples to construct this more complicated bound, this i way k sample bound, or we could just take k1 sample bounds and just average them together. And what he found surprisingly was that as we increase k, the signal to noise ratio of the gradients for phi get worse for i way. So signal to noise is measuring something about how noisy our gradient estimates are. So basically, as we increase the number of samples, we're getting a tighter lower bound, but our gradients are getting noisier and noisier, which seems quite bad. So we kind of have, as you increase the number of samples, one part's getting better, but another part's getting worse. And what we wanted to explore in this work was how can we resolve that ten tension? Can we get the best of both worlds? Can we have this increasingly tight bound, but not have uh, poor gradient estimators? And we're able to resolve this with a new gradient estimator for this i way k bound. It's the W reparameterized gradient estimator. And I'll just walk through the derivation very quickly. Um, you can take a look at the uh, extended paper, which I'll put up the link to at the end if you want the full details. Um, but the basic idea is that we use the reparameterization trick to take the gradient through the expectation. And what I've shown is typically this is the gradient estimator that um, everyone uses. And we can expand it using uh, the chain rule on the total derivative. And what people recently noticed is that when the number of samples is equal to one, um, this term is actually zero in expectation. And so if you just include it in your estimator, it's actually adding variance. And we can analytically remove it when k is one. But when k is greater than one, we're not really sure what to do. And in this paper called Sticking the Landing, they decided that we should just drop the term. And they speculated that it was unbiased, but weren't quite sure how to prove that. Um, what we show is that actually you can't drop the term, but you can apply the reparameterization trick again and get a very efficient estimator. And actually, after you do a bunch of cancellation of terms and some math, it actually simplifies to be something that's extremely simple looking, um, which we found a little bit strange and couldn't really explain that, but it's very elegant looking. Um, so the doubly reparameterized gradient estimator is just a single sample Monte Carlo estimator of this expectation. And this idea is more general than just being applied to the I-way estimator. We can also apply it to other estimators like reweighted wake sleep and jackknife variational inference. And you can see the full paper for more details. Um, so how does this do? So we looked at a very simple Gaussian system. And as I was saying before, the I-way bound um, signal to noise ratio gradient is not good. It's decreasing as you increase k. But for our new estimator, the doubly reparameterized version, it's increasing as k increases. And this aligns with theory. So we're able to use the delta method and show that we expect the signal to noise ratio to grow as the square root of k, and for i way for it to go as 1 over square root of k, so decreasing as k increases. However, we also see that the sticking the landing estimator also does quite well, as, um, too. Unfortunately, looking just at signal to noise is um, 
doesn't tell you the full story. So signal to noise just tells you about how noisy your estimator is. It doesn't tell you if the estimator is actually even pointing in the right direction. So if, you es if your estimator was just one, always, you'd have infinite signal to noise ratio, but it, it would be totally useless. So it's important to look at other metrics like the bias in the estimator. And as we showed, it's, our estimator is unbiased, and our numerical experiments um, show that as well. This bias, this observed bias, is not statistically significant from zero, whereas we can see for sticking the landing, um, it has bias. And then finally, our estimator in this problem turns out to have by far the lowest variance of all the different estimators as well. So then we applied these ideas to slightly more complicated data sets, so handwritten digits and uh, handwritten alphabet symbols. Um, we also applied it to modeling um, structure prediction, so that's the task of you're given the top half an, of an MNIST digit and you want to model the distribution of potential bottom halves of the distribution. So um, I'll break this graph down for you. So what we plot is the gradient variance for these different estimators. And what I'm showing is in solid is our doubly reparameterized version, and in dash is the original estimator. And you can see across different um, latent variable training techniques, I-way, reweighted wake sleep, jackknife variational inference, our new estimator gives much lower variance. And you can also see that on the test objective, this translates into better performance across the board for all the data sets that we tried and all of the estimators that we used. Um, and then, again, we can apply this to the structured prediction task. And you can see that in this case, we see improvements by doing, using the doubly reparameterized gradient estimator across different um, sample sizes and across different estimators. And in this case, the um, unbiased gradient estimator, the I-way uh, doubly reparameterized gradient estimator, gives the best performance across all of the different training techniques. OK, so in summary, these uh, doubly reparameterized gradient estimators are computationally efficient. They are easy to implement. They cost the same as the um, previous estimators. They're unbiased, they have lower variance, and we suggest that um, you should use them instead of the typical estimators. Um, they rectify practical and asymptotic issues raised in a recent paper by Tom Rainforth, and we plan to explore the extension to uh, sequential models in future work. So pay the an extended paper, these slides, and um, code to reproduce all of the experiments are available on this website. We've got time for a couple of questions. So folks have questions they want to ask? Anybody? So I've got a question. Um, I'm interested in kind of the, what experience you've had on some of the larger data sets. And have you found any cases where it actually isn't an improvement? And is there any insight that you can get from that? Yeah, I haven't seen a case where it's not an improvement. There's certainly, I mean, I think one of the things that came up that was interesting and somewhat kind of confusing that I didn't really have time to get into is there's these three different approaches for training the models. And that, like I talked about, reweighted wake sleep or I way. And Strangely, sometimes it's not really clear which one is better. So I think that I think that's mainly a big question that, in my mind, is just what should we be using to train these latent variable models, right. and is there some way that if it's different on different data sets, is there some way to automatically figure it out without having to manually specify it a priori? Right. Excellent. Okay. It doesn't look like there are any other questions. So thank you very much. This is a great okay. talk. Thank you.